Hey there. Nix flakes are really cool. If you've used Nix for some time, you've probably heard about them. They're a very useful feature with a bit of a confusing history. Well, don't worry. Today we're going to dig into flakes and understand what they are and how they work. Nix flakes aim to solve two problems experienced when working with Nix. Dependency locking to ensure that builds are reproducible and a standardized way to define and share Nix projects. Historically, Nix has managed package sets and dependencies of other Nix projects using channels. Channels work by providing a path mapping to a local copy of a repository like Nix packages. However, these local copies of projects can and will be different between machines. Because of this, running a build on one machine won't always result in the same output as another machine. Instead, Nix flakes provide a replacement for channels. With flakes, you can specify inputs like Nix packages, and these dependencies are then locked to specific versions stored in a flake.lock file. Now running a build on one machine will result in the same output as on another machine. Another common pain point has been sharing and consuming Nix expressions from different projects. Imagine you want to pull in a package that someone else has written. Previously, the only solution for this was a convoluted import and fetch combination that was difficult to write, read, and maintain. Rather than importing raw paths within fetched artifacts, Nix flakes give us an official schema to consume Nix expressions. How do you get started using Nix flakes then? Nix flakes aren't enabled by default in Nix yet, but that doesn't mean you can't use them today. Lots of projects already make heavy use of Nix flakes, and you can join them by setting experimental features Nix command flakes in your nix.conf file. For plain Nix installs, you'll find that in etsy nix nix.conf, and for NixOS users, you can set nix.settings.experimental features in your system config. With flakes enabled, you can create a new flake using the command nix flake init. This will give you a new flake.nix file in your current directory. Adding any dependencies and running nix commands on your flake will lock your inputs and store their version info in a flake.lock file. Now it's time to define your flake in flake.nix. A flake.nix has two important parts, inputs and outputs. The inputs of a flake specify what dependencies are required for this flake. For example, nix packages can be specified to pull in the package set. You aren't limited to just nix packages in GitHub, though. You can use flakes from anywhere, including a local path, any git forge, or a tarball from the web. Flake outputs define the available attributes that can be consumed by users. Flake outputs are defined as a function that take in the flake's inputs and produce an attribute set of exported items. The official flake schema defines some well-known outputs, though additional outputs can be created. The ones we'll talk about are packages, dev shells, checks, NixOS configurations, and NixOS modules. Note that these aren't the only outputs Nix defines, they're just the ones we're going to cover today. Packages are programs like Firefox or libraries like OpenSSL. Dev shells are development environments created using the Make Shell helper, and checks are builds that assert the validity of a package. NixOS configurations and NixOS modules declare NixOS builds and reusable configuration for NixOS systems. Packages, dev shells, and checks must be defined for a specific system type, such as x86 64 Linux, in order to be consumed. Any number of packages, dev shells, and checks can be created with one caveat. The attribute set cannot be nested. NixOS configurations and NixOS modules may be defined directly on the outputs of a flake. If you're ever wondering what outputs a Nix flake has or want to explore it without looking directly at the code, you can use the command Nix flake show. This will display all of the outputs defined in a flake and a description of what they are if they're a well-known output defined by Nix. Some flakes will export things that aren't defined by Nix, and that's okay. You can still use them, but Nix flake show won't be able to give you a description. Once your flake outputs are defined, you can work with them using the Nix commands. When working with flakes, you need to tell Nix what flake you want to target. This is done with a flake URI using the following format. A protocol, such as GitHub. A hash, followed by the name of the output. To build a package from a flake in the current directory, you can run nix build dot hash my package. Since the build command builds packages, we don't have to specify the full path to the output, only the name is required. Entering development environments can be done with the command nix develop. 
For example, if you wanted to enter a shell to find in a flake on a GitHub repository, you could run nix develop github user repo my shell. Checks to find on a flake can be evaluated by running nix check. Similar to the previous commands, you can specify the flake and a specific check to run. However, if you only specify the flake, then all checks will be evaluated. This standard interface for importing and exporting things from Nix projects makes things a lot easier than the alternative and avoids reproducibility issues thanks to how Nix flakes lock inputs. If you haven't already, I recommend giving them a try.